Hi, my name is Alex Applebaum. I'm a product management engineer with F5 Networks, and today we're going to demonstrate a Cisco ACE to Big IP migration and a Heartbleed mitigation. At F5, we typically like to automate as much as possible, and our developers even provided us an internal tool to automate converting ACE configs into Big IP configs. And once migrated, we'll quickly introduce some of the advanced functionality you can get with the Big IP full proxy, like response rewrite with the HTTP profile and virtual patching with iRules. And iRules are F5's interface for dynamically programming the data plane. Uh, one recent example of virtual patching was with the Heartbleed vulnerability. As you can see, we have a simple environment where clients are sending traffic through an ACE device to a backend server farm of OpenSSL web servers, which are, of course, vulnerable to the Heartbleed attack. And we'll migrate this config over to a cluster of three big IP devices and an active active standby configuration. Finally, we'll demonstrate mitigating the Heartbleed uh, vulnerability. And there's a couple options. You could either terminate, like with ACE, you could terminate SSL on the ADC device itself. But if that weren't an option for some reason, the Big IP also has another great option. Uh, you could create, uh, you could deploy an L4 only iRule to mitigate it at the TCP layer. And this is a unique transparent option only possible with the Big IP full proxy. So let's get started. We'll go log on to the ACE device and take a look. Here we have a relatively small uh, deployment, but as you can imagine, real production environments could have hundreds and hundreds of services, which would be really tedious to migrate. And as we're pretending this is a new big IP deployment, you can see that these devices are pretty much in a bare metal state. They all have their default host name. And if you were to log on with the default username and password, you could see that they'd be prompting you to license and run through a setup utility. The only thing they really have configured is a management IP. Which we're getting via DHCP. So we're re ready to go ahead and download this configuration to a file called ace-config.txt. Let's make sure that downloaded successfully. And we can see our server farm and our policies, etc. Looks good. And now we're ready to upload this config to our handy dandy ACE migration tool. And we have a couple options. We will up use the online conversion. Take this config that we just downloaded. And we'll take a look at that to make sure that that worked. And you can see that we are using the big IP syntax now with virtuals and pools. All right, that looks like great. All right, and now we are ready to begin our migration using the config we just downloaded. Now in reality, we would expect you to uh, work closely with our professional service consultants who can uh, review differences and optimizations and, and make sure we're following F5 best practices before we actually deploy into production. And we would also discuss the type of migration you were looking to do. For instance, whether you want to do a full cutover or migrate all the services at once um, or migrate selectively on a service by service basis. In this case, we'll assume you've gone, we've gone through that process and we just went ahead and deployed. While this is uh, going, we'll start demonstrating one of the more powerful features of the Big IP full proxy, which is the Big IP is famous for, called virtual patching. The full proxy virtual server provides a really nice abstraction layer, and everyone loves an abstraction layer, that you can centrally deploy policy for your entire application. And in some cases, you could have hundreds and hundreds of services, and it could be a pretty powerful tool in your arsenal to quickly fix issues in one place until you fixed all the backend servers, giving your application owners a little bit of time to breathe and and roll out changes gracefully and accurately. And as mentioned earlier, uh, one recent example was the Heartbleed exploit. And as you know, this takes advantage of an overflow vulnerability in OpenSSL to dump the contents of your server's memory. And with a quick eye roll like this, 
which we deployed immediately on our Dev Central site. You can virtually patch your application and essentially get your Maytag repair person on, i.e. like be the hero for the rest of your team and either keep sleeping, let them keep sleeping that night and when they get uh, do the job correctly when they get in the next morning and not botch it in any type of rush. So to do that, we'll start driving traffic through the ACE device itself, showing that we're not terminating SSL and that the backend web servers and the service as a whole is still vulnerable. So see that we have zero connections right now and once we log on to our client and we can see that we're going to www.mybank and this backend servers are changing so we're getting nice round robin distribution and let's confirm that traffic is going through the ace and we can see that we are getting connections going through the server farm. All right. Now, since we're not terminating SSL, that these this service should still be vulnerable. And we'll use a nice little nmap script. And we find that the service is vulnerable. And let's just confirm real quick with a sample attack. Which dumps the output of the memory to a file called dot out. And we can see the memory is being dumped right there, which could, of course, uh, contain private information that we don't want exposed. It's a particularly nasty bug as we all know. So we'll go and check on the status of our migration. Now this script leverages iControl, which is our powerful API to control the configuration of the system. And underneath the hood, it uses HTTP via SOAP and REST. And there's also some great uh, tutorials and code share examples online if you're interested. And this script is actually using the latest Python library uh, called Big Suds. And we can see that it just finished. So we should be able to log on to our device. And we should be able to use a real user now since we've uploaded our configuration. And we're deployed in an active, active standby state. Now if we go to our, we can see that our service, our pools are up, but we've deployed in a, uh, the virtual services in a disabled state, so we can deploy them in parallel, they're using the same IP, so we can migrate a service at a time. So let's go ahead and decommission the service on the ACE device. And you could, of course, automate this to speed this up, but as you can see, it's pretty quick. And we'll go enable the service on the big IPs now. Enabled. All right, now the server should be live and active on the big IP cluster. Now let's go take a look. Now since we're not terminating SSL on the big IPs either, the service, we expect the service to still be vulnerable. 
no client SSL profile, which would be an option to mitigate. Let's go try that same script on the new big IP. And as suspected, it's still vulnerable. But as this is a full proxy TCB virtual, we can deploy the iRule we discussed. Say we can't terminate SSL on the big IP for whatever reason. We'll deploy our transparent option. And try that again. As you can see, Nmap didn't discover the vulnerability this time. And just to confirm, let's try the actual attack. And that one didn't work either. All right, so finally, we'll demonstrate one last powerful feature of the Big IP full proxy, which is the HTTP proxy. So we'll go ahead and upgrade this port 80 virtual to be a full proxy HTTP virtual. We'll add a stream profile so we can rewrite the responses. And make sure that works. Looks like we're getting nice round robin distribution there. All right. Now, since this is an HTTP full proxy, we can both uh, not only inspect and manipulate requests, but we can also uh, manipulate responses. And so by having this complete visibility into the payloads, we can modify and optimize responses. And, and say, for instance, you had a merger and you didn't own some of the apps, but you needed to change every instance of company food to company bar, you could deploy an IRO like this And voila. Welcome to F5. And this is just a small example of the type of network and application agility that our customers really rely on and love. And that concludes our presentation. Thank you very much for watching. For more information, you can visit our website, www.f5.com, and at the URLs below.